Okay, here's a rotor I made with the new blade design. It's a foot tall and 16 inches in diameter. And it turns quite nicely. Again, that uh, wind speed from the fan, I believe, was about 3.2 meters per second, which is still below where most wind plants cut in. And it has a certain amount of torque to it. If you added more rotors and made them taller, and put a, a vane to direct the wind at the power side and away from the side going back into the wind. You get a few watts out of that as it is and of course power goes up with the cube of the wind speed. Okay, now I've uh, made another one. I've got molds now for the top and bottom to make them out of the same polypropylene ropes and stuff, recycling plastic. And uh, why have I made it so short? Because this one I'm going to try in a shallow stream. Because if you can get access to water, it's got more powerful, more power and more consistency than uh, wind has. See what it does here, if anything. <laughs> oh, looks like it's picking up speed pretty nicely. It's not very balanced, is it? <laughs> anyway, the next test will be it in water. Well, I went down to the creek here, and there's some places that the water seemed kind of fast, but when it really came down to it, it looks fast when you're up close. But you throw in a twig and the only places that you get a meter per second are where it's uh, running over the top of a log or something and it's only an inch deep. So you probably could get power if you kind of piled a bunch of rocks on each side of where you were putting the thing and made something a bit like a dam. But other than that, there just wasn't much. The turbine turned, but quite slowly. Well, I've been up and down this creek a while, not getting the uh, turbine to spin very fast, and I start uh, ticking off seconds and realize that most of the water is flowing under one meter per second, and there's only one place where it seems to be probably about four meters per second and uh, I'll have to bring down an anemometer to <laughs> put it into the water to check it. But uh, this is the only spot right where it comes out of the culvert from underneath the highway. <laughs> yes, this is where you can feel some great force. Things. One is that if 
you've got to have the water flowing like that, just ripping out there. The thing is going to have to be quite well anchored. And the other thing is, it was kind of going boom, boom, boom. And I'm wondering if maybe I should put on four blades or five instead of just three. On the other hand, uh, it should be smoother when I get the diagonal in that directs the water to the side that's getting pushed and away from the side that's coming back into the flow. So now we have this uh, rotor, this turbine. So the next question is, what's next? And uh, the answer to that is, uh, first of all, we need the housing. So that's a wall on the left and a wall on the right and a floor just underneath it and a roof over it and we need another compartment above it to house the generator. For connecting the uh, rotor to the generator we have a piece of pipe here. We'll cut a slit in that and uh, use hose clamps to clamp it on, cut it to whatever length we decide we like, and then the generator is the my improved pigot alternator, and uh, same thing, cut slits in there, and use hose clamps to attach it. And uh, I've described this in generator in a couple of years ago in turquoise energy news and uh, so type in turquoiseenergy.com because there's almost no way to find it with a web search for some reason and, uh, and you can go to the newsletters and uh, look that up if you like that what's improved about it over the original you pig it design really there's just a few changes and it's got a lot more ventilation in it uh, the the fans uh, the magnets act as fans and there's some holes in, in the middle of the coils the iron free coils in the stator to let more air in so I'm hoping it'll be good for a couple of kilowatts or more instead of just uh, 500 watts or else it, it overheats if you have a kilowatt. But I'll just be describing, I plan to describe the the making of the molds and uh, recycling. This, is, this uh, rotor is made of uh, old ropes collected off the beach that uh, got lost from fishing boats or something. And it's a, a simple way to, I call it Plastic Recycling 2.0. Not that it's better than any other way, but it's pretty simple. All my projects are quite well described in detail in my Turquoise Energy news, newsletters at turquoiseenergy.com. Give us a thumbs up if you found the video interesting. Thanks.